I have too many houseplants. So like any sane person, I'm going to build a machine learning model to help keep track of them. We're going to collect a data set, build a model, and then use an explainable AI method to understand how that model works. This will reveal a hidden flaw in our model development process. So stick around if you want to learn an important lesson that I learned the hard way. So the first thing to do is to build a data set. We'll start with the training and validation images. This involves taking a bunch of different photos of the plants. You can see we have four different plants. Their names are Rudo, Bayer, Greg, and Yuki. Yes, they have names. For the purpose of our ML model, these are our four classes or our target variable. In the end, we have 200 training images and 50 validation images for each class. So 800 training and 200 validation images in total. Now let's use those to train a model. Specifically, we're going to train a convolutional neural network with three convolutional layers. I'm running that code now. I'm training it for 10 epochs and selecting the model that produces the lowest cross validation loss on the validation set. What? You don't want your models trained? Finally, we have our model. Now let's see if it's any good. Here, we have the confusion matrix of the predictions on the validation data set. Not bad. We have an overall accuracy of 94%. Before we put this model into production, we should really evaluate it on an independent test set. To do that, we're going to take photos of the plants in a different room. Okay, good thing I have a spare pot. So, like I was saying, we're going to take images for our test set in this new room. And in this case, we're going to take 20 images of each of our plants. When we evaluate the model on these images, we should get very similar results. Wait a minute, something has definitely gone wrong. We now only have an accuracy of 70%. You can see the mistakes are coming from one plant. The model is misclassifying pictures of Rudo as pictures of Bayer. This must have something to do with changing Rudo's pot. Let's use an explainable AI method to understand if this is actually what's happening. We're going to use a method called GradCam. Now, I'll explain the theory and the code for this method in a later lesson. For now, just know that it highlights which pixels in an image are being used to make a prediction. We can see that for this image of Rudo, the model has used the pixels from the pot to make a prediction. In this case, it has led to an incorrect prediction. We can see similar behavior for the other classes. For these, the model is making correct predictions, but it is still relying on the pixels from the pot to make those predictions. Okay, so that explains it. By only taking photos of the plants in one color pot, the model has learned to associate the pot with the class. In other words, we have built a pot detector and not a plant detector. So this video is the introduction to my explainable AI course for computer vision. The course is completely free and you can find a link in the description. I wanted to show what I think is the most important use of XAI and that's showing unknown or hidden bias in computer vision models. Sure, we found out something was wrong by looking at evaluation metrics, but if I didn't break Rudo's pot completely by accident, then we would have missed the mistake as the same bias would have been present in the training validation and test data sets. Other benefits include explaining edge cases, improving fairness and safety, building trust in our models, and learning things about our data set and models that can improve future model development. You can read all about these in the article for this lesson linked in the description. As I mentioned, this is the first lesson in a larger XAI course. We're also going to cover methods like occlusion, grad cam, SHAP, 
deep lift and integrated gradients. There will also be an option to buy an ebook if you want to access the course content offline, and there will also be a paid version of the course. With that, you will get the ebook, you'll be able to watch all the videos ad free, and you'll get a certificate for the course.